When the prophetic is declared in the Spirit of God, it has the capacity to release potential and to change your life to move you towards your divine destiny. <clears throat> so, how does that prophetic word reach us today? Well, I mentioned already the principle of impartation, but we'll look at it a little more specifically in the practice of releasing the prophetic. We can find uh, lots of places to look to, but I, there's one place in particular that serves our purpose this morning. And it has to do with the example of the prophetic impact of the ministry of the Apostle Paul upon his spiritual son, Timothy. Timothy, you know about, he's mentioned in Obuku of the epistles. And we know that he traveled extensively with the Apostle Paul. That he'd been in Corinth with him, he'd been in Ephesus, he'd been on some of the missionary journeys that are detailed in the book of Acts. One of the places that um, that is um, particularly important is Ephesus because Paul writes two separate letters to Timothy whom he has finally left at Ephesus to put the church in order and to rebuke those who are who are embracing false teaching and to establish themselves. Now, I want you to imagine just for a moment what it might be like to have traveled with the legend, the Apostle Paul. Now, he's a legend to us. He was, he was becoming legendary in his time. I mean, how many preachers do you know who regularly, when they preach, are thrown in jail, beaten, left for dead, stoned, shipwrecked, etc.? We don't have many durable guys like that around anymore. You interview him for a job, the first thing you want to talk about is the pay package. Paul said, my reward is not in his world. But Timothy gets to follow along behind this. He gets to watch some of the amazing things that take place with Paul. They travel together through many of the storms, distresses, circumstances. He sees all manner of signs and wonders accomplished by the hands of Paul. And then one day Paul says to him, look, Tim, i got to go. This place needs some ongoing attention. I'm going to leave you here to do this job. And he goes, me? What does Paul say? A Peter. A son that's been raised. A son who sees it has come. What does Timothy say? <laughs> Me? What's he looking at? He's looking at the superstar thinking, look man, I'm happy to carry your parchments. <laughs> you know, I'll bring you water while you preach in the synagogue. But me? Does that sound human enough for you? All right. Paul writes to Timothy in Ephesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, he says, For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Do you recall in the book of Romans where Paul is writing to them, he's not yet seen, but he's, he's writing his master treatise to them, and he's speaking many things. He says, I have the desire to see you. That I may impart to you some spiritual gift. Now here's a son of God who knew his toolbox was full. And he had the ability to move with such discernment that he could say, I know what you need here, let me give you this. And the Lord is showing me this about you here, let me impart this to you. That's a tremendously secure guy with some measure of experience in the anointing. Now, let me... Let me just set up a little, little bar here for you. If you have no intention of serving the purposes of God, if you have no intention of being obedient to the Lordship of, of Christ, if you have no intention of obeying the leadership of the Holy Spirit, don't get in line for an impartation. Because it does not serve you eternally to assume responsibility for a revelation that you're going to refuse to steward. Just stay ignorant, pass on, and don't take the higher standard of judgment that comes with the gift. Okay? Now, let's just set that aside and pretend that you want to go on. All right? So, Paul is writing to him to remind him that when I laid hands on you, you got something. You got what you needed for that task that you, to which you had been appointed. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, he goes on to say this. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you. <coughs> which was bestowed upon you through the prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Do not what the, the gift? Do not neglect it. What does neglect look like? Apathy. Apathy. 
Stay clapping, Dad. Laziness. Laziness. Too busy. Too busy. Yes. You know what? You know what it looks like around the house? Dust. What does dust tell you? This thing has been neglected. What does a note from your husband or your wife from the dust tell you? War's coming. <laughs> Do not neglect the spiritual gift that is within you, which means you can what? You can neglect it. Or you can not neglect it. What would not neglecting it sound like? Well, he, he, comfortably enough, he tells us. He says, take pains with these things. How many of you know that some things are God or pain? There are some things of God that are just a pain. Imagine, for instance, caring. Caring for people is a pain. Do you realize that? They just, they're just impossible to work with. What you want to do is just wash your hands, walk away, and leave them alone. If that's the way they're going to be, let them be that way. But you can't lie. Because you can't. It is just a pain to work with people. Or so I'm told. <laughs> but take pains with these things. Take pains with them. Listen. He says, be absorbed with them. Good Lord. Be absorbed with them. What does absorbance look like? Bounty. Brawny. Skunkbomb. Start out, you know, at the top of the class. You have to be trained. 